just for me. Just for me Jesus came and did it Just for me Just for me Just for me
Good morning, church, and happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter. All right. Let us stand this morning. Let's give God praise. Let's give Jesus some praise this morning. Bless his name, because he is risen. Our God is risen. I know about anybody else's God, but our God is alive, and he is well, and he is on the throne on our behalf. Somebody give him praise this morning. Come on. He's worthy. Worthy is the lamb. Do you have your opening hymn? Joyful Trinity in St. Philip's Cathedral and Happy Easter. Good morning. Happy Easter. I cannot help but remember Easter morning of 2020. There were police out front making sure that we had no more than 10 people in the room. <laughs> we were nervous wrecks because we had not done a live stream before. The cathedral was our home for the day and I was watching the numbers because I didn't want us to get arrested. And I remember when person 11 came in thinking, typical New Jersey, the rules are for everybody but me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think by the time it was over, there were 12 people in the room. Nobody got COVID and nobody got arrested. <laughs> it is good to be here now. Amen, Amen and alleluia. Our worship continues on page four. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I shall read the first lesson, a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines stained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, and he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will answer them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our second lesson today is from the reading of the first letter of Corinthians. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also you stand, through which also you are being saved. For if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I, in turn, had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundreds, 
brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us join together and sing this great hymn of the church, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of the God who loves us. Amen. Amen. It is Easter and the word Alleluia is back. We sing it, we say it as often as we possibly can, especially on Easter because we haven't been saying it for 40 days. All through Lent we put that word away. In some churches the children actually bury the Alleluia's. Uh, on um, uh, Ash Wednesday, and then they are not heard of or seen again until we get to this day. And that word, Alleluia, is important to us. It translate as, translates as praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Every time you say Alleluia, you are saying praise the Lord. I've been thinking about this for a little bit, and it struck me that we could say Alleluia every time we say Amen. 
Because when we say amen, that translates as I believe this prayer, I believe what I'm saying, or so be it. That's another way to translate it. So when I say amen, or so be it, I mean this prayer, I believe this prayer, to follow it up with the words praise the Lord means not only do I believe it, but I know God's going to do something, so I'm praising God already. Hallelujah. That those two can come together, and they especially can come together during Easter and then what we call these great 50 days of Easter. We will celebrate Easter all the way from here until Pentecost, hearing the story of the disciples who were following Jesus just after he left, all those encounters that they had with him and the decisions they had to make themselves along the way in order to continue to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Every time I hear it, I'm going to say it. <laughs> because praise the Lord, honestly. I, the, the thought that we are actually here, and I, I just don't forget things. I remember the last four years. I remember how rough they were. And COVID was part, or part of the roughness, but it wasn't the roughest part. George Floyd, Ahmaud Aubrey, Bianca Taylor... It was terrible. Amen. And hallelujah. <laughs> and then watching our political system yeah. Yeah. go absolutely crazy. And for anyone who holds the highest office of the land to be othering people, this is not a political statement. This is a statement of faith a statement of Christianity that the way God created the world was God loved everything God called into being. Nothing was other. Everything belonged to God. So to have someone holding the highest office in the land saying, you don't belong, you're not good enough, liar, thief, tramp, using that kind of language, othering people with disabilities. I mean, it was shocking. Yes. Absolutely shocking and meant to be shocking to our system. Yes. Meant to be. And then, then there are people who simply got used to that and got to the place where they accepted it. I, I sat with a group of people. I'm going to get to my sermon in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> When Easter's coming. It is coming. But I sat with a group of people last year, a vestry of one of our churches, and um, the, a person on that vestry said, Bishop, can you please help me? I don't know what to say when the conversation goes in a crazy direction. When I'm with my friends and I'm with my family, and they start talking, white gentlemen, European descent, and they start talking about people who have black or brown skin and why they shouldn't be in the same job or why we're seeing so much of them on television and they are taking more and somehow there's going to be le less for us. And I said, well, what do you say? And he goes, nothing. And I said, D and does your soul make that okay with you? And he goes, no, that's why I'm asking you what to say. <laughs> and I said, you got to go back to your baptismal covenant the words are right there. We're going to hear the baptismal covenant today. We're going to say it right along with Wendy. Where is Wendy? Who's getting baptized? There you are. <laughs> Hello, Wendy. <laughs> We're going to say those words right along with her and for her as she says them. But those, th that covenant says that we're going to respect the dignity of every person. It's right there. Which all comes back from the greatest commandment to treat others the way you want to be treated. This is not that hard. Amen. And let's also act like that as people of color, we aren't sitting in rooms where we hear people othering folks. We are famous for some of the othering that we can do to people. Absolutely famous for it. So hurtful that sometimes people avoid our communities. When we hear that language, it's not just enough for us to point at another person and say, they need to stop. That what we have to do is claim the, the language of God's love for the person who's being othered. That is not acceptable. Those are words we can use. That person is loved by God. Those are words we can use. That person is created by God. 
Those are words we can use. And then we can say directly to those people, I am your sibling. I am in it with you, those who are being othered. There are, there are words that we can use. We have that. That is given to us by God. The ability to see the way God sees and the ability to stand for God's beloved people the way God stands for God's beloved people. All of that is something that we can say praise the Lord for. Hallelujah. That God gave us the ability to speak and to speak into things that are terrible. I want to point us to Mary Magdalene who we see in all four Gospels at this stage of the resurrection story. She is the first one at the tomb. The first one to see nothing in the tomb. The first one to go running to tell people. The first one who actually does see the risen Lord. And when she sees the risen Lord, the first one to go out and tell people that I have seen Jesus and that he is alive. I didn't see his body. I saw him alive. The story is the story of, of Christ's death and resurrection, but the story is told first by Mary. That passage that we hear today starts and ends with Mary. It starts and ends with Mary going in the darkness to take care of Jesus. In the darkness, nobody else is there, nobody is awake. I don't know how many of you have um, buried someone, but it is not unusual. I, I've, I've been officiated at lots of funerals, and I've had some in my own family. It is not unusual to have at least one person in the family, after the repast, go back to the graveyard. Am I talking to anybody in here? <laughs> has, has been the one to go back to the graveyard? to make sure everything is okay, and to say one more word to your loved one who you know is not there but is there, that their body is there. We just need to know it's okay. That's Mary. She needed to know. She also needed to know that he was taken care of fully for burial and sit with him. That is her doing that. And to get there and not see anything and rather than just kind of freeze and run out of fear, she ran to get help to see what was happening. In this story, it's important to pay attention to the repetition in this story, that, that she runs back to get them, and then Peter and the disciple that Jesus loved, we assume that is John, Peter and John go running too, one a little faster than the other. One looks in, sees nothing. One looks in and sees all of those wrappings. It always catches my attention. I wonder if it catches yours. So somebody's coming out of all of that stuff. If you're wrapped up in things, how would you get out of them? How do you get out of your clothes? You just kind of throw them off. I, I, I bet you there's one person here who takes them off and immediately folds them to put them into the laundry. But most of us just throw our clothes off. Those wrappings were folded up neatly neatly to the side to let us know that they were as good as new and not needed. There was no use for them in this tomb. The one who needed them was alive. I can't imagine that Jesus actually folded up all of those wrappings himself. But I wonder how many angels, I wonder how many of God's messengers assisted in taking care of him and getting him completely unwrapped. I mean, these were the same folk who sang at his birth. A chorus of heavenly hosts singing at his birth. I imagine that those same messengers were there taking care of him in his death and resurrection making sure that he was well, making sure that he was ready. And here comes Mary running back again. So we've had running over, running back, running there, running out again. The two disciples leave because they can't see him and they don't know what is going on. She's going back. You would think that they would all just be hiding someplace. 
afraid of what the Roman army might do with them, afraid of what anyone in authority might do with them, that that fear would have just put them off of it altogether. But there she is running back, and she sees that person and is questioning him, and it is not until he calls her name. When she hears her name call, then she can see him. Now this is a true hallelujah moment because it's our moment also. That is when our name is called that we can actually see Jesus. It is when we can tell that we are known by Jesus when our name has been called. Sometimes you actually hear your name. Some people just hear their name being spoken and kind of look up or look around and wonder who that is. I'll tell you, it's Jesus. When you hear your name being called and you can't figure out who called your name, it's Jesus. Pay attention. When you hear your name, say hallelujah and pay attention. Because that's exactly what Mary does. She gives us a clue about how to handle this. He calls her name. She looks at him. She goes to touch him. He says, don't touch me. Can't do that just yet. And then he tells her what to do. And he tells her what to do. What does she then do? What does she do? Um, open up your bulletin and look if you don't know. <laughs> It is in the gospel passage. I hear somebody, I'm, I'm not letting the choir speak because I know they're trying to say it and gently say it. I'm t asking you all. You know, it's like, like the big sister over there is trying to say, okay, you know the right answer. Go ahead. What does Mary go and do? She goes and tells the disciples. He says, go tell the disciples. And she goes and tells the disciples. This is the thing that we have got to remember. Jesus calls our name, and then Jesus tells us something to do, and then what? We have to go and do the thing that Jesus says to do. This is Mary's part of the story. Mary's part is starting in darkness and saying, I don't know what to do here. Everything is horrible. Everything is a mess, a.k.a. the last four years. Everything is horrible. Everything is a mess. I don't know what to do here. But she then starts looking for Jesus. If he's not in that tomb, he's got to be somewhere. She's wandering around trying to find him. That is our story, that we are wandering around trying to find him, saying our prayers, reading scripture, coming for communion, praying for other people, sitting in meditation, listening to the sound of our voice, that we are doing that. And in there somewhere, Jesus stands before us and calls our name and says, go and and do this. Amen. Most people I know already know what the this is. Because somewhere along their life, they have been given a very clear picture or a clear indicator of what it is they are supposed to be doing, that kind of lifelong overarching this that you're supposed to do. I would say in this particular time that we're in, we're also getting multiple message about what this is in order to care for people in what has become an incredibly dangerous time where we really are our brother's keeper. We really do have to watch out for all of our siblings, where we really are not flying solo that it takes every member of the community watching out for the whole community in order to keep people safe. So there's the big this that you do with your life, and there's the everyday this, that Jesus is in all of it. Listen, I know people who will tell me all of the time, God doesn't care about the little things. God has so many people that God has to deal with. God is dealing with the big things only. And I said, if that's the God you serve, knock yourself out because when I go to the grocery store I ask God to help me pick the best oranges do you know how expensive those things are 
and we love and, and I love I love oranges. I love good ones too. I love the expensive ones that don't burn my mouth off. I ask God, make every cent that I use be well spent. Guess what? I've never had a bad orange in my house. Jesus says to ask God for our daily bread. We pray the Lord's Prayer saying that all the time. That's the God who cares about every detail of our life, including those moments where somebody says something in a room and we don't know how to respond because it is hurtful or dangerous to somebody else. That when Jesus calls our name and sends us, that he will give us what we need in order to do that thing that we have been called to do. Here is the thing, though, and I, I love New Jersey. I love New Jersey people, too. I especially love that funny little accent y'all have. <laughs> it just... It does my heart good every time I hear a New Jersey accent. It really and truly does. Uh, I'm very affectionate towards that and affectionate towards our view of life, our view of family, and our view of the world. I'll always think of myself as a Texan, but I'm a New Jersey Texan <laughs> at this point. But I will have to say about us, if we have a fatal flaw, is that we think the rules are for somebody else and not for us. And so we don't have to step into something. Somebody else will take care of that. Or that thing that God has asked me to do, maybe, maybe not. Maybe somebody else will take care of that. I'm not feeling it today. That we, in our independence and our determination to believe that we are in control of absolutely everything, and that is 100% a, tra a trait of this state and this nation, that we are in complete control of everything, often reject the thing that God tells us to do. We would not be the first. There'd be the whole nation of Israel that was following Moses, who said, please send us back to Egypt. Those leeks, those potatoes, that food was so good there, I don't care that they were beating me to death, but it beats this desert that you have me in right now. <laughs> I don't know where food and water is coming from. They knew what they were told to do. Their names had been called by God, and they wanted to reject it. Harriet Tubman went back into the American South over and over and over again. There's a, there's a saying that was attributed to her. I don't think she said it. I think someone said it of her. She saved hundreds. She could have saved thousands if they had said yes when she called their name. Some were too scared to go. I can tell you right now, a thing that is deep on my heart is the number of third graders in the city of Newark, Irvington, Millington, Patterson, who just go up and down the state. Every city in northern New Jersey, it doesn't matter what city it is, 30% of the third graders do not read at grade level. When you don't read at grade level in third grade, chances are incredibly high that you will not graduate from high school. And that puts you, that does, everybody didn't have to go to college, but it puts you in a certain earning pool. It determines the rest of your life in terms of medical care, what your family is going to look like. And there are companies that look to that data to determine how many prison cells we're going to need in 15 years. I say this as often as I can in the hopes that someone will hear God calling them to call their local third grade and volunteer to read with a third grader once a week. We'll have a thousand reasons we can't. Well, the school won't let me do it because I'm religious. Well, I, I don't know that school. I'm not a parent. I might have to have a background check. Uh, somebody else will do it. I'm telling you, God is calling our name for third graders in this state. It's up to us if we go and do what God has told us to do. The freedom of Easter, the joy of Easter, 
The bliss of Easter is that we always have access to Jesus. Always. Nothing can take that away from us. Not one single thing. But I tell you this, until we get to the point where we are constantly listening to our name called, and we are always going to do the thing that Jesus tells us to do, that that becomes habit for us, it becomes so ingrained, we don't even think of it. It's like breathing. Doing what Jesus tells us to do is just like breathing, that we live that way. Until we get to that place, Jesus is always something that we're going to feel. His presence is something that we're going to feel momentarily that will leave us the minute we have a bad experience. Here's how you know you have had an encounter with the living God. Your life looks like Mary's. People know your name because you are the one that is bringing God's love everywhere you go. They may not know your faith. They may not know your theology. But they know you are bringing God's love everywhere you go. I want to give you one piece of homework, and it's from today's psalm. You'll see, I just tore mine right out of the bulletin. You are invited to do the same if you don't want to take the whole bulletin right along with you. I, I think it's hard sometimes when, it, when I preach sermons like this. I know I'm talking to some people who get this, who understand, oh, yeah, no, because Jesus calls my name. I know, yes, yeah, sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't. They get exactly what I'm talking about. And then there are some people going, call my name? What is she talking about? <laughs> that have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. But if that is something you would like to know, it is something you can pray for. You can ask God to help you hear your name being called, to help you know when it is God guiding you. And I want to take you to um, verse 14 of Psalm 118. So you don't even have to tear the whole page out. You can just tear out the top part of the, the page. Verse 14, the Lord is my strength and my song. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. When you look at Mary, known as being the first to tell the story, started in the darkest place, the scariest place, and moved to the place of incredible light and incredible power. That is the story of a woman who knew that Jesus was her strength and song and that he was his, her salvation. Jesus is our strength and song. And he is our salvation. And today, on Easter, he is calling our names. Hallelujah.
the candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Do you desire to be baptized? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Will you, who witness these vows, do all in your power to support Wendy in her life in Christ? We will. we will. Okay, so that's on page 12 at the top of the page. I'm going to ask it again so it doesn't <laughs> take you by surprise. This is for the whole congregation. Will you, who witness these vows, do all in your power to support Wendy in her life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to, to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will. I will. That's all. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for Wendy, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you let the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, 
we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here are cleansed from sin and born again and may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Wendy, I baptize you with water in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Wendy, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon your servant the forgiveness of sin and raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Wendy, receive this light and be as Christ's light in the world. Amen. Amen. Okay. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Welcome, welcome this glorious Easter morning to Trinity and St. Philip's Cathedral, all of you who are worshiping with us together, and all of you who are worshiping with us online, it's a hallelujah, mm -hmm. Christ our Lord is risen this day, amen. Amen. 
I bid all of you a wonderful cathedral welcome. Just a little housekeeping. For communion, we will be offering the bread and we will be offering the wine in two forms. You may sip from the cup or you may have a host in tinted into the wine and then handed to you. Okay, don't worry. We've got given you instructions as you come forward and the ushers will be able to assist you. If any of you have gluten-free issues, we have gluten-free host as well. More importantly, if you choose not to receive, that's okay. You can still come up. Just cross your arms in front of your chest, and we will give you a blessing. Because you see, all are welcome at God's table at Trinity and St. Philip's Cathedral. So having said that, I will turn this back to... No, one more thing, Bishop. One thing I have to I do, do is I would like to thank, in particular, there are three or four folks here who hung out with me all through Holy Week. And boy, I'll tell you what, they were at everything all the time, working it, doing it. And they are beloved and blessed members of this, this cathedral community. They don't say a thing. They don't ask for any recognition ever but they show up and be up because God has answered their call. Mm -hmm. Answers the call when, when God calls. And that is definitely Carol, Marilyn, Janetta, Judy, for sure. All four of you, uh, we're going to thank you for your beautiful, beautiful service to God's house here at Trinity in St. Philip's Cathedral. Amen. Let Amen. us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our lives and labor to the Lord. Amen. 
Our worship continues on page 19. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May the God who shook heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, bless you, keep you, and give you power to go forth and share good news. Amen.
grace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Some Easter baskets to give out. Our guild will be presenting them. How would you like to have that proceeded? Have them come up to you. Okay, children may come forward. I don't know how big your all children are, but uh, come on up. Please do. And will the altar party please stay vested and meet us at the altar? Yeah, yeah, I'm a kid too, so two baskets, three baskets, and three kids. Oh, 